Hello everyone, Paul with High Tech Legion, and we'll be taking a look at the ASUS Maximus 4 Extreme Motherboard BIOS. This is an ROG board, Republic of Gamers board. It's one of the uh, elite boards that ASUS has to offer for the P67 chipset. If we take a look in, in the BIOS right now, there's a couple different modes. You have Easy Mode and Advanced Mode. Right now we have it in, in Easy Mode which shows the time, the version of the BIOS, of course the motherboard itself, CPU type, total memory, the build date of the BIOS, and the speed. When we go further to the left, we see our temperatures, our voltages, and our fan speed. Below that, we have system performance, which can be set to three settings, no power saving, normal, and ASUS optimal. Below that is our boot priorities. We can set which we want to boot first. Going into our advanced mode, that's where we come into the meat of the BIOS. Right now we're an extreme tweaker. As you can see up towards the top on the left you have an LN2 mode. This does have an LN2 switch on the motherboard that you switch up and it'll allow you to if you decide that you want to do some extreme overclocking with some liquid nitrogen, switch that up. It'll change the motherboard settings for you so you could run at the colder temperatures. We then have our target CPU turbo mode speed, target DRAM speed. CPU le level up is our next selection. Uh, there's three different settings, auto, 4.2, and 4.6. This is basically a one-click way to overclock your CPU. You can choose one of these three options. If you choose the 4.2 or the 4.6, it'll automatically overclock your CPU. Once you get into Windows, everything will be optimized for that specific frequency. The Extreme OC Profile. We have AI Overclocking Tuner. Of course, if you're going to overclock, you do want to set that to manual. Turbo Ratio. I always select all cores. Your maximum turbo ratio setting Basically, this is where you would set your multiplier for your turbo. Of course, you would have you have internal PLL over voltage. I have that set to auto at this time. Memory frequency. The memory frequency could be you could select your memory frequencies out of your drop-down box. You also have a memory bandwidth booster, which has two settings: enabled and disabled. And the EPU power saving mode, which I have on disabled at this time. If you want to run kind of uh, a low power machine, that's where you would want to go. Let's go to the DRAM timing control. Once we click on that, we can see what we have our frequency set to and our timings for our RAM. You have your primary and secondary timings. GPU dim post. This basically shows you where you have your GPUs populated on the motherboard and you have your DIMMs, your DIMMs uh, populated. CPU performance settings, of course this is your CPU performance. Your CPU ratio, if you wanted to just change your, if you have an unlocked processor and you want to change your multiplier, you can go ahead and change that there. You have an enhanced Intel speed step technology and turbo mode. The turbo mode parameters, I have it disabled at this time. But basically what you could do with the turbo mode parameters is once you enable it or disable it, you could override Intel's functions so you could get a little bit more voltage out of your board. These different settings set different limits and power that you're putting through the uh, turbo core. The Digi VRM power control. We have very many different settings. You won't see this on most other motherboards. Uh, Asus decided that they were going to allow you to change the settings on a lot of different frequencies do with the the digi vrm the pwm the mod sets etc the frequencies uh, switching changes and your phase control right now it's set to t probe sorry it's set to t probe once you click on that you have two uh, modes t probe and extreme your v core your v core control and I think my mouse doesn't really like to uh, to click right uh, today. And when we go to that, we can see what the voltages are that we could change that to. 
Of course, we have load line calibration. You can set that from zero to 100%. The higher you go on your overclock, the more you're gonna want to adjust that uh, voltage core droop. V-core switching frequency, you have auto and manual. Once you set it to manual, it'll give you another option, which you can set your, your VRM to, your fixed VRM frequency mode. Normally when I overclock, I go anywhere from 350 to 500, depending on what type of uh, range and frequency I'm looking for out of my Sandy Bridge processor. Your V-Core overcurrent protection, as you can see, and we also have a V-Core phase control, which can be set to standard, optimized, extreme, and a manual adjustment. So if we go to manual, it also brings down your manual adjustment for all, all ultra fast, fast, medium, and regular. V-Core overcurrent protection can be, can be changed in the manual mode, but if you do set it to extreme, you'll notice you could actually shut off the V-Core overcurrent protection. The VRM over temperature protection is enabled at this time. I usually run it disabled if I'm overclocking. And as we go down, we have more, more uh, phase controls, more switching frequency options, etc. This is for the VDRAM. The switching frequency, you have different settings there. For the phase control, you have disabled, auto, and enabled. VDRAM over, uh, VD over current protection is disabled at this time. Then we go to the VCCSA switching frequency, which I have on auto. The phase control, of course you have different settings to enable it and disable it. The VCCSA over current protection is disabled. And down towards the bottom we have the VCCIO switching frequency and the IO phase control. Going back to the extreme tweaker, we have the extreme overvolt. The extreme overvolt is basically how we could overvolt our CPU and go with higher limits if needed. CPU voltage is underneath that. And of course we could set our CPU voltage manually. You have your DRAM voltage, then of course your reference voltages. VCCSA voltage, your normal voltages that you would set in other motherboards or on a, a regular ASUS motherboard that doesn't have all these uh, all the different frequency tweaks that you could utilize. You will see that there are some uh, skew driving voltages in here. This is basically so you if you feel that you need to adjust your base clock by lowering or raising these voltages, it will allow you to get a little bit more out of your base clock than you, than you would expect to with a normal uh, Sandy Bridge motherboard. <laughs> and of course, last but not least, the CPU spread, spread spectrum. On your main screen, you'll have your BIOS information, the build date, south bridge stepping, CPU information, memory information, of course, system date and time, and your security. Under advanced mode, we go to CPU configuration. CPU configuration is basically the same thing as in Extreme Tweaker, but it gives you a few extra, a few extra options that you can tweak. Intel Adapt the third thermal monitoring, active processor cores, limit CPU ID maximum, and of course your C1E step uh, settings, C3 and C6, your turbo mode, and speed step technology. When we go to our monitor, oh, sorry about that, let's go back to advanced. You have a PCH configuration, SATA configuration, I have that in ACHI mode at this time, SMART is enabled, and this tells you where I have my, uh, what drives I have connected to my SATA ports. USB configuration, Onboard devices configuration, your HD audio controller, your USB 3 controller, Marvel storage controller, J Micron controller. I usually disable that, I'm not using it at this time. 
your APM, which is basically your restores. The IROG configurator, basically this is uh, your configurator and your timekeeper for the Republic of Gamers configuration settings that can be used through Windows. The ROG Connect, of course I have that enabled right now. We will be going over the the RC Bluetooth to show you how to literally overclock your CPU and your motherboard uh, via Bluetooth with your Android phone. LED controls, of course the LED controls turn on the LEDs on the on the uh, board if you want them on or not. And now we'll go ahead to the monitor. Anti-surge support is enabled. We have a voltage monitor where we could monitor our voltages. Temperature monitor which monitors our temperatures and it also sets uh, overheat protections. Fan speed monitor and fan speed control. Under fan speed control we can enable the Q fan control, we can enable the Q fan control for the chassis and we also have a power fan. Power fan can be enabled if you're using uh, say something like a DH14 where you have a couple fans on the on your heatsink and you want to plug that in go ahead and do that and you could turn that to duty mode and you could set that up to 90% and moving over to the boot this basically gives you your boot options what you want to do with your system how you want it to boot up etc it'll tell you to use the full screen logo what mode you want to go into when you do go into your bios I have it set to advanced mode at this time and then of course we have our tool this is where your easy flash utility is your SPD information Easy Flash Utility will allows you to flash off of uh, flash your BIOS off of uh, any type of disk that you might have, uh, a flash drive, etc. The SPD information shows you the uh, JDEC specs for your for your memory. Asus OC profile. Basically, you can store overclocking profiles with the ASUS OC profile. Go button file. Basically uh, again more frequencies that you could store through the uh, Republic of Gamers uh, line. They give you multiple options to constantly tweak different things. And of course the BIOS flashback. This has two BIOS chips on it. You could literally store two different BIOS, one for overclock or one for just normal everyday use and go back and forth between them just by clicking on the BIOS flashback. It is two separate BIOS. It's not a default like a default BIOS backup. You could literally store the BIOS on each of the BIOS chips. And of course if we exit this and save changes our CPU will reboot and our system will come up and the first screen that you will see is the Republic of Gamers screen thank you very much and for the full review please visit www.hitechlegion.com see you next time bye bye